Hi everyone, meteorologist Joe Chaffee, SNS Storm Chasers, meteorologistjoechaffee.com, weatherlongisland.com for all your latest weather needs and storm chasing desires. Uh, we're going to take a look at uh, everything that's going on. Uh, first off, uh, uh, here's a view of the eastern two-thirds of the United States. You can see the perspective with regards to Hurricane Gaston, the tropical depression off North Carolina. You can kind of see here right at the bottom of the screen this strong depression in the Gulf of Mexico that, based on reconnaissance aircraft, is borderline tropical storm and probably will get upgraded at some point during the day today. A lot of dry air covers the northeast and mid-Atlantic states and even into the southeast. You can see nice clear skies just about everywhere. Uh, some clouds are streaming up into the western Great Lakes. That's with the next cold front. So we've got a great day today and a good night tonight, and most of Wednesday should be fine. Uh, just want to caution that Gaston has been sitting out here for a few days now, so waves have begun crashing onto the beaches on the order of four to six feet. And there is going to be rough surf and high risk of rip currents up and down uh, the New Jersey shore uh, to uh, Long Island. Actually, that probably extends down to the Delaware beaches uh, and even down into southern Delmarva. So this entire coastline from southern New England, uh, the Atlantic Ocean facing beaches all the way down uh, to uh, Maryland and Delaware uh, facing the idea of rough surf. And I think this is going to be a problem through the rest of the week and into the weekend because we have to deal with these two systems here and how they play out as they move their way to the northeast. Let's look close up first off. Here's Gaston right there. Uh, you can kind of see the southern edge of the depression goes out of this uh, uh, view here. And here's the tropical depression that's in the Gulf of Mexico that continues to show increasing thunderstorm activity uh, in and around the circulation center. Um, and here's, uh, we'll, we'll jump off first off, let's go to the Carolina uh, tropical depression. Uh, some uh, thunderstorms have been increasing this morning. Uh, the latest reconnaissance uh, da data from this, though, is a little bit underwhelming, uh, but uh, still think that uh, between the warm waters, the lowering shear environment, and a little bit of energy getting induced by an approaching cold front of the coast might cause this to pop to tropical storm strength uh, either later today or overnight into uh, Wednesday. But this is going to be going out uh, to the northeast. Now we'll jump off to the tropical depression in the Gulf of Mexico and, and um, starting to get into the daylight hours so we can see the visible satellite picture. So in a few more turns, I think the center is probably right around here somewhere. Uh, but there's been a lot of thunderstorm activity blowing up during the overnight. And pre the pressures have also fallen a little bit. So I think this is going to go at some point um, to a tropical storm um, this uh, during uh, today. Uh, and we'll watch and see what the Hurricane Center does. Usually a good thing, a good rule of thumb is as soon as the video is done and posted, uh, the Hurricane Center will <laughs> it winds up issuing some sort of emergency statement to make me do things over again. Now, I want to look at the upper air pattern because this is important <clears throat> going down the road. Um, I want to start with the European model today. Here's the jet stream. So we have this little trough that moved through here yet, late yesterday that brings in the drier air. So remember, the jet stream are the railroad tracks that air masses travel on. So And those railroad tracks are constantly changing. Everything goes from west to east uh, in the flow. So our air is coming from this area, this particular region of Canada, which is pretty nice. And now you can see this stronger trough that comes in for the end of the week and then moves offshore over the weekend. Um, what happens is that the bottom part of this trough kind of gets fractured a little bit. And that, at least the, the, the suggestion is that the tropical storm or whatever system comes out of the Gulf of Mexico winds up moving northeastward and, and kind of gets picked up by one of these short waves that's coming down. Now, the European carries it out to the east, <clears throat> which makes the most sense given how these weather systems usually work. And then uh, as we this is now Saturday evening, the jet stream starts to pull up back into Canada. We have an upper high that builds in for Sunday and Monday, which would uh, make for uh, a pretty decent rest of the weekend. Uh, temperatures will probably warm up into early next week. A lot will depend on nuances with the onshore flow. But I want to show you what the GFS does because that's a little bit different with how it fractures the trough. It's been doing this for a couple of days, and I've been kind of ignoring it because um, 
it's not really the most realistic solution. It also does the same idea. Now, you can pick up right in here is where this tropical storm is going to be. And we're looking at the 18,000 foot level, by the way. Um, that part, bottom part of that trough starts to fracture. But the difference between the European and the GFS model is the GFS model fractures it and then separates it from the main flow. So it sits it here off the mid-Atlantic coast over the weekend and then kind of starts to do this sort of rotation game uh, up and around. Um, the Canadian model actually does the same thing, okay? So we're going to look at this, and you'll see that the Canadian model kind of does the same idea. Now, what does that mean uh, in terms of the, the weekend? Well, it means a couple of things. Um, one is that uh, Saturday looks fine, but beyond that, um, the GFS would suggest, and I will put this in a close-up view so you can see, the GFS would suggest that the tropical system that's coming out of the Gulf of Mexico, and you can follow it here, so there it is right there, okay, comes out of the Gulf of Mexico, here's this big high that builds up to the north, and then that system gets, because it gets trapped, it kind of just uh, moves north and then northwestward or rotates around, uh, to our south and east. Now, I'm going to tell you, if this is literally correct, we could have something like that sitting there, and the weather here will still be fine. It might be a little breezy, and the ocean will be really rough uh, with a tropical storm uh, sitting offshore by a couple of hundred miles. But it, from a practical weather standpoint, it may not make a difference. But still, it's very interesting that the model does this. And I want to show you that the Canadian model follows along in this idea. Now, just because the two models do that doesn't mean that it's correct and here's the Canadian model view which is the same idea only it of course because it has a tendency to want to make everything a category 3 hurricane um, makes this well not a category 3 but maybe a, a category 1 or a strong tropical storm and wants to take it up close to Delaware Bay and then bring it up uh, the coast you know what I this model of all the models is the most unreliable one and this by the way would be for you know, early next week for Sunday into Monday. I, I really, at this point, stage of the game, I'm just showing this because I'm sure you're going to see people talking about it. And, um, you know, I am not a proponent of, you know, pretending like information isn't there because it is. Um, so I'm showing you to you. I'm giving you my opinion. And by the way, take a look at the Europe, the hurricane models here. All right. Because the hurricane, none of the only one of the hurricane models kind of does that GFS Canadian idea. The rest of them all take it out to the northeast. This and the European. I mean, this that this idea makes the more sense. It's more logical um, than what the global models do. And when we look at the GFS ensembles, they're kind of all over the place, and you can see them here also, not quite as deep, but you know. At this point, I'm putting it. I'm putting the information out there because it's there, and we're gonna just leave it at that. Uh, in the meantime, let's just uh, focus on the idea that we are going to have a terrific day here today with lots of sunshine, temperatures uh, that are going to be into the low to mid 80s with low humidity, and we will, of course, update you on any uh, developments in the tropics as we go through today. Don't forget, SNS Storm Chasers for all your storm chasing needs. Meteorologist JoeChoppy.com, WeatherLongIsland.com for all your local weather information and a Joe Stradamus perspective.